God will use injustice to take you to a higher plane. Pride stands as the great enemy of faith. Faith must be subject to testing to prove and perfect a man in patience and surrender. Faith is not merely a confession, it's a consecration. It must produce something in us before it releases something from above. Thanks for joining us on Life Journeys, a podcast about thriving through the worst pain that life brings. With global initiatives threatening big changes to our way of life, we're going to need to activate Jesus' words about mountain-moving faith. Words That Work is the ongoing series on life journeys that is rooted in releasing revelational words of faith that will work every time and with everyone. It's about moving the mountains that keep us from the presence and goodness of God. It's about defining our life purpose and identity through encountering Him. Until we have the power to move the obstacles that are destroying our liberty and hope, the prophet Habakkuk could have been like many of the protesters we see today. He didn't like what was going on in his nation either. But what really bothered him was that God was bringing in people far worse than his own nation. It was his judgment, and Habakkuk challenged the justice of God. He struggled with the same seeds that atheists have, charging God with being unjust. They're the same seeds that want to sprout up in all of our lives as Christians when things are pressing in hard and God isn't removing the trial. I'm presently in a very difficult trial that I wouldn't wish on anyone. A trial I just don't want to detail, but in it I sense God saying, I'm teaching you to live in battle for the long haul, teaching you to live in my peace and the power of my presence with you every day. But that means overcoming every temptation to charge God with being unfaithful. The root of it, as the prophet found, is pride. God's answer to him became the New Testament's hallmark of righteousness for the apostles. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. It's often easier to have faith to die than it is to live by faith. Living by faith is the higher plane of authority over the devil and darkness. Live by faith when the prison cell has locked you away and your brothers are dying around you. Live by faith when you believe in healing and the sickness remains, the accusations increase, and the battle to get through the day is intense. That's the higher plane of faith. God is equal to the challenge. Last night, as the storm rolled in heavy, and I saw midnight, and then 1 a.m., and then 2 a.m., and the devil seemed like he was roaring, the phrase kept rolling over again and again. Don't worry about anything. God's going to take care of it. I continued to repeat it as if my mind was on automatic, and sleep came. I'm called in this season to live on a higher plane. It's the space between the promise and the fulfillment between knowing and receiving. God has put us in this world filled with evil and temptation, and He has imputed sin to us from the fall in the Garden of Eden. In this predicament called life on earth, many of us feel a heavy sense of it all being very unfair. We may have cried out, God, it's unjust that you put us in this fallen world and then expect us to live righteous and holy. Therefore, know this. Our Creator has the responsibility to give us all we need to overcome and live the abundant life. He has the just requirement of His love to completely care for us according to His Word. Though He doesn't owe us anything based on our merit, he obligated himself to give us his glory and kingdom and provision along the way because of his love, faithfulness, his holiness, and his righteousness. His very nature demands of himself that he pledge our complete care of every need. Ours is to believe and let faith's testing complete his building of the image of Christ within our soul. Why here? 
Why is this verse here in this discussion? Why this verse is given to highlight this revelation is what I want to talk about. It's because the prophet had accused God of being unjust. He didn't like the way he was running things and all the evil allowed in his own nation. Hear that. The echo of his heart cry is in all of us who often challenge how a God of love could allow the suffering that he does. But one day my spirit rose up in defiance of my difficulties. So I wrote what I called today's declaration. I will dance upon the mountains as they thunder beneath my feet. I will lift my hands in praise as the horizon is shut in by an impending storm. I will worship in peace as the lightning strikes out at me in the night. For my God has created the wind and the rain. He governs the quaking mountains and superintends the lightning. Nothing escapes his watch care over me as he stands near with sword drawn. I am safe. I will both lay down and sleep, for thou art near. There has always been only one set of footprints behind me, and they are his. I may have made many choices and walked about according to my own will, but as the cameras of eternity pull back, the entire journey of my choices was walked out in the palm of his hand. When I doubted, I trembled and fell. But he was still there. When I believed, I rose higher. Goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life. Sit now in rest, O my soul. So it seems from the prophet Habakkuk that pride stands over against the soul as the great enemy of faith. It is as the hot breath of a steed in battle. His pride seeks to exalt himself, defend himself, and defy any other to bring him down. You can see pride rise as the horse's breath when he snorts a stream of indignation against any who would dare challenge him. Any who could claim to teach faith, must have been in this battle, been brought low by it, and acknowledged that it is God who stands against the fortresses of pride and brings them low. The proud then cry out injustice as they vent their puny sense of what is right against God and nations. They protest when the devil is loosed on them by the permission of God. I don't deserve this. I won't accept it. I rebuke it, they say. That proud, carnal Christian who spouts faith upon the breath of his indignation is not to be trusted as he teaches all those about him what authority he carries in the name of God. I see it in the Christian who defies the demons that God himself has given permission to raid the proud halls of carnal Christianity in America and in all that defiles in this fallen world nation. You just can't teach faith until its call has brought you low, like Peter, in his bold but audacious claims of allegiance to Jesus on the eve of his crucifixion. Faith must be subject to testing to prove the man, refine the flesh upon the cross, and perfect him in patience. Then, when he shouts at devils in darkness as the disciples did but failed, his Fasting from the pride of life will have filled his words with true authority. I used to teach faith with authority until I was severely tested. Why? I needed to be set apart, refined, chastened, and purified. The Bible says he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Faith has been accompanied by severe testing in all of my ministry life, and it's no different now as God seeks to take you and me to a higher plane of holiness and glory. Faith must work in the fire, not just in the pulpit or upon the tongue. Faith is not merely a confession. It's a consecration through altars of sacrifice. Faith must sustain us through the cross as our only relief 
in times of great trials. It's one thing to have faith for gifts, healings, and blessings of God's presence, but it's entirely another to have faith when its activation calls for the surrender of all that we hold dear in the flesh. What is its activation? Trials and testings. For faith must produce something in us before it will release something from heaven. The first right response of faith is repentance for salvation. Without it, faith for eternal life is dead. Upon this foundation is built a life of daily surrender to God as we grow by the same faith that gave us the Spirit. To live by faith is then to live by the Spirit versus living by the flesh. Faith can proceed no further than our surrender to God of all we hold dear in this world. Even the prophet of God in this book of Habakkuk had to surrender his indignation at the sins in his own nation. Then he had to surrender his pride upon hearing that God would punish his nation by a nation more evil than his own nation of Israel. Yes, pride still exists in the people of God who have begun in the Spirit and are trying to finish in the flesh. The Thessalonian church had to live by faith instead of the carnal belief system of the proud. They did not say, our faith should have spared our goods instead of them being taken by ungodly persecution. They would not be beguiled to think that their faith would materially bless them so they could say to the world, see how God blesses the believer through faith? God will not be advertised by supernatural trinkets that he gives to Christians to lure the lost into heaven. He will not appeal to the lust and the pride of the carnal man to convince him that he is a good God. He'll let the world accuse him of injustice all day long as he permits the suffering caused by sin to destroy the world, all the while being blamed himself for its injustices. The man of God knows who he is and whose he is. He needs no validation, especially by those who would accuse God of being unfair. He himself has learned in the fire. He has come to own the confession of Daniel's friends. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Their faith confession was backed up by their courage in the heat of battle. Faith's confession must mature into faith's sacrifice. You can unlock the presence of God in your life. There are revelation principles that remove the mountains, keeping us from joy, hope, peace, and purpose when our world gets turned upside down. Look for these words that work with Pastor Hardica as he shares what has helped him when life got hard. And don't forget to check out his book, The Fortress and the Firebrand, available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Thanks for listening to Life Journeys. Find new episodes every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you're new to this series, it begins with the September 16th episode. God will use injustice to take you to a higher plane. Pride stands as the great enemy of faith. Faith must be subject to testing to prove and perfect a man in patience and surrender. Faith is not merely a confession, it's a consecration. It must produce something in us before it releases something from above.